Is the bear market of 2022 finished wreaking havoc in the financial markets? Most market experts don't think so. There's likely more trouble ahead. I'm Seth Freuberg, the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk here in Manhattan. And the professional traders on our desk are trained to capitalize on every market regime, whether it's bullish or bearish. In today's video, we're going to share with you how you can take advantage of another leg down in the market, but at the same time, if that leg down never actually materializes, you will definitely make money. If you're intrigued as to how that could be, then stick around because you might not realize how easily this can actually be done. Hi, I'm Seth Freudberg and I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk. SMB Capital is a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan, and we provide capital for options and equity traders from all over the world, trading both remotely and in our offices here in New York City. So I'd like to suggest that you click on our subscribe button right now so that you don't miss any of our free trading videos that we produce for traders and investors all over the world. They're really valuable. Okay, so this has been pretty much of a textbook bearish year with the SPY stock representing the S&P 500 index, of course, down about 20% from its early January 2022 highs with lower highs and lower lows and what is actually a pretty orderly looking downtrend, as you can see. And it makes sense because the Fed has declared all out war on inflation and it won't quit until inflation has been defeated which no one can know with any certainty. And so there's this giant cloud hanging over the market until this gets resolved, resulting in sellers stepping in at pretty much every opportunity. It's basically the reverse of what was happening in the prolonged bull market that preceded this. Buying the dip was a pretty easy trade. And these days, selling the bounce is getting just as easy. So if you're in the camp where you think that the market has to have a volatile choppy road ahead of it with dramatic sell-offs continuing to plague the market for some time now, then you may want to pay particular attention to the strategy that we'll be covering in this video. Now, before we dig into the details of that strategy, I wanted to mention that if you're interested in learning three more option strategies that our pro traders use, including the unique options trick that allows you to make money while you wait to buy stocks or ETFs at the price you want, and the options income strategy that allows you to make consistent money, whether the market goes up, down, or sideways, and how to make money on a stock or index trade, even if you're outright wrong on the direction, then click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen. That will open the free workshop registration page in a new window. So don't worry, you won't lose this video. Or you can register directly for free at optionsclass.com. Believe me, you don't want to miss this. So pause this video, sign up now, and then resume watching. Since this is a video about SPY stock, we need to make sure that everyone understands how stock options work. And this is going to be quick for those of you who already know how they work. Okay, so what's known as a put option on a stock entitles the buyer of that option to sell 100 shares of a stock that he owns at a certain price called the strike price of that put option, regardless of what price the stock is actually trading at when he exercises that right. The buyer of the put option pays what's called a premium to the seller of the option because the seller of the option is taking the risk that the stock will go way below the strike price of that put option, in which case the buyer can exercise his option and force the put seller to buy his shares at the put option strike price, which is higher than where the market is trading, causing the seller's account to get marked down. So even if the market goes way below the strike price of the put option, the buyer of that put has the right to sell 100 shares of that stock at the strike price of that put. So he'll get way above the market price for those shares by virtue of owning that put. And so the premium of the put option reflects the risk that the market thinks the put seller has that the shares are going to go much lower than the strike price of that put. And so all other things being equal, when a stock price comes down, the price of the put option for that stock goes up because the put seller's chances of taking a loss because the market has blown through his strike price gets larger as the stock's price continues to drop. On the other hand, if the stock closes above the put strike price on expiration day, the put expires worthless and the put seller just pockets the premium he gets for taking that risk in the first place. 
Okay, so with that said, let's head back to October of 2018, which was a year that was rallying along, minding its own business, when suddenly, at the beginning of October, the market suddenly started to sell off, with SPY coming off of its all-time highs, which were at that point up at 293, and selling off over 8% in the first three weeks of October, which is actually a big move down for an index in such a short period of time. And so suppose that you were of a mind that this sell-off is likely to continue for a while, but ultimately end and resume climbing. Well, suppose on that day that you pulled up an options chain expiring in a couple months in December, and you went ahead and bought five of the puts at the 260 strike price expiring on December 20th, almost exactly two months out, and you sold five at that same strike price, that 260 strike price, but the ones you sold were expiring in March of the next year, 2019. Well, when a trader buys a put option at a strike in one expiration chain and sells the same number of put options in an options chain expiring at a later date at the same strike, the trader has sold what options traders refer to as a put calendar spread. Now, we'll see a little bit later why we structured the trade this way, but for now, Let's take a look at what just happened from a cash flow perspective. And as you can see, for the puts we sold in March, we received $6.58 for those. And because each options contract represents 100 shares of SPY, we multiply that by 100 and we sold five of them. So multiplying that all together results in cash inflow of $3,290. But at the same time, we bought five of the December 260s and so we paid less for those, $3.39, because the market has less time to get down to 260 by December than it has to get down to that same price by March. So the market builds in less of a price for the put seller to take that risk. And so that nets down to a cash inflow of $15.95 when we first initiate the trade. Okay, so now let's move forward to December. And as you can see, that final quarter of 2018 acted quite a bit like the first half of this year actually has acted in that it just continued to grind downward on the day that the five options we bought expired. So suppose we went ahead and sold them as the market was closing at 240.70 and we were able to sell those for $19.73, which makes sense, right? Because whoever bought them had the right to buy SPY shares at 260, the strike price of the puts, even though SPY was trading about 19 points lower at 240.73. Okay, so now let's again move forward to the day that the SPY options that we sold expired, which was March 15th of the next year, 2019. And as you can see, SPY did eventually bounce as the trader was hoping for. And so on the day that they expired with the SPY closing at 281.31, those SPY options we sold down at 260 expired worthless because no one is going to exercise their right to sell their SPY shares at 260 when you can fetch over 281 for them in the open market. And so let's analyze how this trade has fared now that all of the options have been closed. And we'll start with the cash we received when we initiated the trade, receiving more for the farther out options uh, that we sold than we had to pay for the closer in options that we bought which was that 1595 cash inflow we got at the beginning of the trade. And we add that to the cash we received selling the December 260 puts when SPY had sold off down to 240, where we got 1973 for each of the options. And so the total we received from selling those December puts was 9865. And then finally, we take into account that those March options expired worthless because SPY closed so much higher than 260 on March 15th, resulting in a trade profit of 11,460 in less than six months. Now, before we wrap up, I wanted to focus on one more important issue, and that is the fact that the trade, of course, might not have gone this way. And so if you think of the three basic cases, it goes like this. First of all, of course, is the case we just examined, which is a further sell-off followed by a bounce which was the trader's initial thesis and has a great outcome of over $11,000. The second scenario is where the market just stops selling off and bounces right after we put the trade on, and that would result in both options expiring worthless, both the Decembers we bought 
and the March puts we sold because if the market closed above 260 in both December and March, then neither of them would have any value. And therefore, you just keep the 1,595 you received initially, which really isn't bad for your trade premise being completely wrong. And then, of course, there is kind of a worst case scenario where SPY never gets down to 260 in December of 2018. So the December options we own expire worthless, but the market does sell off below 260 by March of 2019, in which case we would be required to buy those SPY shares at 260. Well, as of today, the SPY is trading at 392, three years later, which is a 50% increase in those shares, even given the dramatic bear market circumstances of this year, 2022. So it's pretty hard to say that we're call- what we're calling the worst case scenario on this trade is actually bad at all. I mean, I'd love to have today another 500 shares of SPY with a cost basis of 260, and I presume you would too. And so what I'd like you to take away from today's video is that once you learn about option strategies, you can apply them to pretty much any market scenario that you can think of and tailor a trade to fit what you think is a likely way for a stock or index price chart to play out. And sometimes there are strategies like this one where what you might think of as the worst case scenario is arguably the most positive thing that could have happened. It's these kinds of scenarios where you can win in so many different ways, which attract so many professional traders to expressing their trades with options in the first place. Now, just to remind you, if you're serious about your trading, you need to check out the free intensive options class that we're currently running, where you'll learn three real world option strategies that our professional options traders use all the time. Just click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen, or you can just head on over to optionsclass.com to register for this free workshop directly. It really is a rare opportunity for retail traders and investors to learn directly from Wall Street traders, but that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now before you miss it. Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos they're producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comments section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video from all of us at SMB, train and trade well.